Hello everybody and welcome back to Big Bear Automations. Um, this is day two of the Learn N8N in 365 days. This is a year's program. Um, if you're not familiar, the plan is, is that we're going to do a video every day in a year to at the end get to a big workflow suite of um, NIM workflows that you can then refer back to with all the mentality and the knowledge that you need to get there. I'm cutting back all of my workflow experience, all my coding and front end experience, and we are getting into it from beginner to advanced. If you haven't seen day one, then the link is on the screen somewhere. I am pointing, but the bear doesn't point. I'll point with his nose. It'd be up there somewhere. Um, and go and watch day one to start today is all about getting set up on our self-hosted um, server. So here is what the AI has told us. So the prompt has said that day two, we're going to be installing NAN on the cloud or on a self-hosted server is what we're going to be doing. So it's going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial to get NAN up and running on your server or the cloud. Different ways to run NAN on the cloud or self-hosted. So if we go over to NAN and go have a look at the pricing. The pricing here is going to be for cloud. So I'm not going to set up the cloud, um, but it's very straightforward. It's going to be exactly what the self-hosted look like. You just sign up, right? Like you sign up for any other program and it will unlock your NAN. You log in, you'll see what we see. Um, the only difference being is that you can have cool projects and stuff on the the cloud self-hosted is uh, doesn't have those features, but we can go through that when we get there. Cool. So we're going to focus on self-hosting today. And how we're going to do that is with a Docker image and render. So render is my go-to, it's hosting. Um, and they have a very nice, they have a very nice deploy NAN on render for us. So set up your render, you can set up your Postgres and you need to set up a bit of information so that you can store your workflows, etc. But we'll go through all of that step-by-step step as we go through this. So. What we need to do is log into render. I've already got an account. So if you want to log in, sign up, get your bank details on there. Um, and I'm going to build and self host with you. So step by step, we'll go through. So you'll get onto your dashboard. You won't have a service. This is just one that I'm using already, but you won't have that. You'll just have this view. And all you need to do is come up and click web service. This gives you three options. Git provider, Git public Git repository, or existing image. We're going to go existing image is what we're going to do. We are going to come through here, see what they're telling us to do. I don't think, I think this does GitHub, not Docker. But I prefer the Docker way. Oh no, here we go, Docker. There. So where's your link? To simplify connecting your energy and it will create a template repo that helps you to sort of blow it off together using render. Okay, we're not going to do a row that at the moment. We just want an AN up and running with their storage repository, blueprint, database. Where's your Docker? Persistent disk. That's what we're going to do eventually. Okay. So can't find it on there. So what we're going to go is just go NIN Docker. And come over to Docker Hub, which is where all the images are. And we want the NIN one. So if you scroll down on the NIN Docker image, we'll come down here and there should be a link. This is the one you want. Docker.nin.io slash NIN io n a n this is the one that you want we're going to grab that and then we're going to go and have a look at tags 
Now, these are the, just the different um, pushes that they do, but we want the latest one. And we want to be kept up to date on the latest, which is normally the go-to. Normally they call it latest, sometimes stable, etc. But we're going to go latest because it gives us all the latest functions when we update it. So we're going to come back over to the Webflow, paste that in, put in latest at the end. Don't need any credentials. And then we're going to connect. Okay, you can choose whichever region you want to be in. I'm going to keep it on the Frankfurt one because I'm in the UK, so EU makes sense. And I'm going to do the starter. So the reason why I don't do the free um, is because it turns itself off and I don't want it to. I want it to stay alive so that when I go on my mobile or I go onto a different laptop, etc., it's always going to be up and running so I can get onto it. So I'm going to go starter. Um, starter so far has been fine for me. Again, if you need more, nor space, etc., just build it up. It's really not that expensive. Um, if you want to do it for free and you don't care about having it up and running, just do it for free. Um, but I'll go starter for this one. Um, but let's, if you want to go free to test it, then that's fine. That's me. So we're not going to bother with any environment variables just yet. We're just going to get this deployed. So if we deploy, oh, sorry, that's a lie. We're going to add a disk because we want space. So I'm going to add in a five gig. No, this might. So we want this space. And the reason being is because we want to store our workflows. Um, if we set it up without work, this space, it won't store the workflows and when every time we deploy um, we'll lose all the work that we've been doing so we want to make sure that we keep that so if you go over to the um, render deploy your docs again it will show you down the bottom persistent disk this is what we want so it's hard to render create your render Create your, there it is, create your Docker image. Provide the name under your environment. Add port variable with the value. Oh, this is the default port that um, NA and listens on. So let's go do that. We're going to go over to do this. So port. Nope. I'll type it in then if it doesn't want to be copied. Port and the value was five six seven eight five six seven eight. Um, and we're gonna save that, and then we're gonna go back. In the advanced drop down in the box drop will find disk, and then click add the disk to following field appear. So we've searched that. This is the bit you wanted. Set your disk's mount path to slash home node. So this is the default for NAN. So we go back down here, go to your mount path and pass pass in the home slash node. I've done a five gig size. I mean, one gig will probably be enough, um, but five gigs just gives us that space. You can always upgrade it. So keep it low if you wanted to. And as we build it, we'll update it. And then set the size. You can increase the size later as needed. And like I just said, deploy the web service call. So we're going to do that. Now this might take a little bit of time while it renders, but what it will give you is a URL to your self-hosted um, NA10. Again, need to wait for it to start. It will say successfully deployed so that we know that we can start going in and messing around with it. I'll leave this running so you can see how long it takes. But the idea is it's that we get this all set up, sorted. So there are a few other environment configs that we want to look at, especially if we're going to do webhooks and stuff like that, but we'll go through that in time when we get down to the webhook side of things. So as you can see, this is just starting to build now. And we want to deploy it. And this will be our URL. There are a There's a common issue with the URLs 
um, and getting your own domain. But again, when we get to that, I'll show you what I mean and we'll build it out slowly. This idea is, is that we're following documentation, we're building it out, we're, we're, we're deploying it as we need. Uh, and we're gonna start learning step by step as we go. Okay, your service is live. So now if you click your URL, you should see a familiar NAN login screen. Here we go. And we'll click next. So that's your login that you need to save. Um, let's just get started. So you can send a free license key to your email address. That will come through here. When he wants to load, Google's been slow. Um, it's all being very slow. This is the joys of not editing. Okay, so that's taken that, that's nice. So you come in here, you'll have your license key here. If you just take it, go over here, go to your settings, I think it will be in. Yeah, unlock, uh, send license key. Oh, enter activation key. There you go. And then you've activated it. That's all you need to do for that bit. Cool. So now we have got our NA10 up and running. Um, we can now start creating our workflows um, and then back on our dashboard we can see our metrics, our logs, how much space we're taking, what it's doing, what kind of requests we're getting, how much of the disk usage we need, etc., etc. And that is it for day two. Troubleshooting installation. Yeah, so this one is quite a hard box to tick, but if you do get any installation errors, just add a comment to the video and I'll help out and jump in and we'll add, I'll add to the end of this video if I need to. Um, but as you can see, it should be quite explanatory as long as you've got these link, which I'll put into the description, um, you should be fine. Um, and I'll also send, put a, a render link in again. I'm not affiliated with these. Um, I won't get any money or anything from them. So it's just the one that I use cause I find it easy. That's all. Um, but it'd be good for you to, to learn that side and, and do it together. So again, um, thank you. Please subscribe. Um, it keeps me going. Day three, we are going to look at NAN, explore the canvas, how we move around, how we save, execute, etc., etc. all the beginning stuff. But we're starting to get into actual NAN this time, so it'd be good. Um, if you actually need help as a business to do your NIN workflows, uh, reach out to me on email or give me a message or a comment because um, I do this as well. Uh, I'm just starting from scratch. So thank you.